children are wayward, the reason children have an ungodly mindset is because they never had a real man in their life. You cannot encounter a real man and your life will not be shaped and transformed. The reason for confusion in marriages today is there is no real man in the house. The reason why the society is decaying is because real men are absent in the society. Shout hallelujah. The reason why the church is not standing strong and advancing the kingdom of God is because real men are absent in the church. The reason why people are so confused and the enemy is taking advantage of many lives and people living out of their woundedness and our outlook of life is degrading is because we have not encountered the real men. May the Lord raise up the real men. My earnest prayer that in this Father's Day, real men will truly rise. Are there real men in the house? Some are not answering because you know. Are there three men in the house? Yes. And the Lord said, from this moment, he will raise up the three men. And I see three men coming alive right now. Yes. When this woman encountered Jesus, she ran into the city and said to the men, Come and see a man. Finally, I encountered a real man. You men, I knew you, what you have done to this city. But finally, I saw a real man. May the Lord make you encounter a real man. Amen. Now, at what time of the day did she this woman visited the well to fetch water. According to verse 6, she visited the well at the sixth hour. What time was that? The sixth hour. By interpretation of the, of the Hebrew time, the sixth hour indicates 12 noon. Someone say 12 noon. Our own 12 noon. By tradition, many of us, you have the privilege of opening your tap and getting water. Some of us, we know how to walk miles. How many have experienced that? I do. Uh -huh. I know myself. I won't lie. But I thank God for grace that I can open water anyhow now. That's why I'm thankful to God. Where God brought me out from. Uh -huh. Mostly, when you want to fetch water, especially from the well, what's the good time of visiting there? Very early in the morning, we do that. We wake up 4.35 a.m. and walk the miles and go for water. Miles. And you bring it back again. You, are, you guide it so jealously it must not fall. Otherwise, wasted there for because you have, you have a big place to fill up. Shout hallelujah. So people visit the well very early, 4.35 a.m. They, they are the well. Why would this woman decide to visit the well? Why was the decision? Why would, she, why would she decide that she would visit the well at noon? She knew that when people go early by 5.30 or by 4, 5, 5.30, they will have come and walk their distance home. I don't want to meet with anybody. I have had enough reproach in the community. The time I will visit the well, going and coming, even at the well, I don't want to meet anybody. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it's an indication that she had been through turbulent times. She has seen turbulent things, stigmatized, failed relationships. As actually, Jesus identified that she has married five times and no, no, no. None of this worked out. She was on the sixth, and that sixth is not even certain yet. So she knew the reproach, the shame. So she tried to avoid people. Have you been pushed to that point of life of avoiding people? You have been pushed to isolation. 
You can imagine the fate of this woman that day when she carried her water pot and going to the well. For known, even the, the most sluggish person at the well must have gone home by now. I have been doing this every day. I don't want to see any face. Enough of the trouble. Enough of their stigma. En- enough of calling me names. I just want to be by myself. This was how she was living her life. But you can imagine her faith that day as she was carrying her water pot. A man. Hey, what kind of day is this? And I've come too far from the village to come this place, to come to this place, a man. Jesus was there with his disciples. He has even sent the disciples away. He was there alone. And I love the scriptures. The Bible said, and Jesus sat at the well. If the man were to be somewhere else, she would have pretended as if I don't see you. Just do what I have to do and run. But the very point she's coming, is, look, you are meeting me here today. You see, another man. Hey, I've been encountering men and I knew the danger. I've been encountering men. They have brought so much reproach to my life. What kind of man is this again? When she was going to fetch the water, she was so certain as usual that there would be nobody there. But as she approached the well, what happened? Jesus was sitting right on the well. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me tell you one thing. The very point where you have been running away, avoiding people, and feeling so ashamed, Jesus is sitting right there waiting for you. Her purpose of coming out that day was to the well, and the very well she was coming to, Jesus was sitting there saying, I'm meeting you at the point that scare you most. I'm meeting you at the point of your reproach. I know many times when you come to this well, they make mockery of you. When you come to this well, you become the topic of the day. When you come to this well, people ridicule you. I'm here waiting for you. Resurrected Jesus is waiting for you at the point of ridicule. Oh Lord, help us here. What has caused you shame? Jesus is there. Not just standing, but enthroned there. Oh, somebody better understand. The real man was seated, waiting. Say today, that reproach will be over. I really don't know what kind of reproach you have been carrying all your life. But Jesus is sitting at the point of your reproach. I really don't know what has caused confusion and isolation to your life. But resurrected Jesus is sitting on that point of reproach. You better welcome him. Welcome him. Oh Lord, you better understand that. Say resurrected Jesus. I welcome you into the very point of reproach of my life. Oh somebody better welcome him. Something great is happening here this morning. Amen. Anything they are programmed into your life to make you weary at the point of breakthrough. Holy Ghost for consume it. In the name of Jesus. Anything that wants to cause weariness or slumber into your spirit man, at the time of rejoicing and stepping to miracles, Holy Ghost will cast it out. In Jesus' name. Receive strength to connect with miracles right now. In the name of Jesus. Listen, Jesus is seated and thrown at the point of your ridicule. On what has caused you shame, Jesus is enthroned there. Amen. Who wants to say, Lord Jesus, I welcome you there. Listen, some people, are, some people are wounded to the point that even if there is no drop of water in the house and they got to the well and saw a man again, they will turn back, say, no water today. I will, go, I will rather go thirsty. But the woman said, Today, I'm confronting my fear. Oh, Lord, help us here. I've been running away from men. I've been running away from people. Even their wives and their children will join to ridicule me. But today, I'm confronting that fear. There is no way she can draw water without an encounter with Jesus. And she said, every time I come, I don't meet people. I think this is a good time to come. But today, you are here, a man again. But she did not walk away. She confronted her fear. Somebody need to 
confront your fear. That which has been causing torture in your mind. That which has seriously and deeply wounded you. Somebody say it's time to confront it. Oh, somebody say it's time to conquer it. Somebody say it's time to prevail over it. Can you therefore welcome Jesus seated at the point of ridicule in your life? Welcome him and appreciate him. Oh, is that the best way to welcome him? Is that the best way to welcome him? Resurrected Jesus, I welcome you to the point of my shame. I welcome you to the point of my reproach. Can somebody welcome Jesus? Hallelujah. If I were you, I would do it all heartedly. If I were you, I would give him a standing ovation. Hallelujah. Masekete diba. Mashendiriha. Resurrected Jesus, we welcome you into our life again. In Jesus' name. I see the Lord Jesus enthroned at the point of your ridicule. Taking away the shame, taking away the ridicule, taking away the affliction, and restoring joy into your life. You receive that joy and peace. Say yes. yes. Say thank you, my resurrected Jesus. Is that the best way to thank him? Because you are enthroned at every point of my reproach. Thank you, my resurrected Jesus. Because you are enthroned at every point of my ridicule. Thank you, my resurrected Jesus. Because you are enthroned. You are enthroned at every point of my shame. In Jesus' name. You really thank him say yes. Somebody say, I welcome the real man into my life. What would be the nature of a real man? What would be the characteristics of a real man? How can you identify a real man from their conversation? You can determine who a real man is. Let's quickly go through that. Verse, verse number seven. Shall we look into that? Verse number seven, John 4, 7, read. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. And verse nine, then said the woman of Samaria unto him, I see that thou be a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings, the Samaria. The Jews, they have no dealing with the Samaria. With the Samaritans. Shout hallelujah. When she got there, maybe she, re, she barely say good mo, uh, uh, she, she barely said I. She was just, I might do, let me just, there's no water in the house. Let me just quickly even if it's not full, just one round and run out of this place. And Jesus began the conversation. Knowing that this woman will avoid me around. Can, I, can you please give me water to drink? What was Jesus doing? He was breaking the barrier of rejection. Someone say, break the barrier of rejection. Say it again. When you encounter a real man, his assignment in your life will be to break the barrier of rejection in your life. Somebody say, real man, break the barrier of rejection. Oh, shout it a minute and say it out loud. That's what real men do. The Jews... They despise the Samaritans. Who are the Samaritans? The northern part of Israel, the ten tribes who are regarded as the Samaritans. Why? At the time of invasion, they were taken out, the people of the northern part were taken out of their land to another land, relocated somewhere. And they were filled, the king of Babylon brought in people from other lands. To inhabit the land. Some of the people that were evacuated came back and intermarried again. So they called them Sam 
prayer. Psalm 10. That's the origin of that word. It was a word of reproach. So the Jews do not want to identify because they were not the original people. They have intermarried married, and so they did not believe that they have any covenant with them. So it was a reproach to be called that name. And they don't even want to mingle, not for, one, for any reason. And so there were, she, so for her coming closer, I say, oh, it's a Jew. This makes it better. I will not even bother to associate. Do what I have to do and run away. But when you encounter the real man, his assignment is to bring you out of your rejection. Shout hallelujah. An encounter with the real man is to add value to your life. Why would Jesus ask for water? Which is, you don't even associate, talk less of asking for water. It's like, you have been despised. I can see it, I can feel it. You have been treated as nobody. But I want to, I'm here to add value to your life. That's what real men do. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are there still real men in the house? A real man will identify your weakness and be there for you as strength, support, until you become who you should be in life. That's what a, a real man will do. We identify your weakness not to take advantage of you. We identify your weakness in order to be there as a point of strength and support. So that that will give you any courage, any encouragement you need to be where you are going to. Shout hallelujah. What people do is to look down on others and make them a point of ridicule and reproach. When David stood before Goliath, the first thing Goliath did, the Bible said, he disdained him and he cursed him in the name of his God. But David despised all those. Say, you come to me with all these weapons. I also come against you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. The Lord God of army of Israel whom thou hast defiled. You can't disdain me. I know my purpose. I know my strength. So the real men we not take advantage of others. I ask you, have you been discredited, belittled, brushed aside? But the Lord this day is lifting you up. Yeah. Have you been disregarded, treated with contempt, put down? Today, the hand of God is lifting you up. Yeah. Have, you been dis have, you, have you been considered unfit and been dismissed? Resurrected Jesus is bringing you alive again. Yeah. It's the Lord that raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifted up the needy out of the dung hill. He made them to sit with princes, even with the princes of his people. I see in every way you have been ridiculed. Strength is coming upon you now. Life is being restored to you right now. Somebody lift up your voice. In every good thing of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I arise above discord. I arise above disapproval. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, spirit of rejection, get out of my life. In Jesus' name. Mark of rejection, get out of my life. Now, in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus, I break covenant with rejection. And I cast it out of my life. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, I'm accepted among the beloved. We better declare that blessing upon you. Shout it loud. I am accepted among the beloved. In Jesus' name. You receive that, say yes. yes. The first thing when you encounter a real man, we break the barrier of rejection. A real man will identify your rejections, your point of ridicule and shame, and will be there for you as support. Say, you are coming out of that rejection. The, a real man will look beyond your weaknesses 
to see your strength and bring out your strength. Somebody say, I come out of my weakness. I receive strength and grace to prosper. In Jesus' name, how would you identify a real man? Verse number 10. Shall we read out loud? Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who is he that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Shout hallelujah. If thou knowest the gift of God. Somebody say, I know the gift of God. A real man will identify the gifts and manifest the gift for edification. Somebody say, identify the gift. Manifest the gift. Say it out loud, somebody. Identify the gift. Manifest the gift for edification. One more time. Say, identify the gift. Manifest the gift for edification. You believe that? Say yes. When you encounter a real man, a real man will look out for opportunity to demonstrate his gift in order to edify and elevate you. A real man will also help you in discovering your gift, who you are. Shout hallelujah. To know a real man when confronted with problems, you really don't give up. Rather, you will reach deep and draw out strength from the reservoir of your gift. Somebody say, reach deep. Louder, somebody. And draw out strength from the reservoir of my gifts. Reach deep. Draw out strength from the reservoir of my gift. How would you know you are gifted if you have not been tested? How would you know you are capable of doing something if there are no trials? Trials and troubles may come, but the real man, we see that trial and say, it is difficult, it is hard, it, is, it looks impossible. But something in you will tell you it can be fixed. It is troublesome, it is bad, but good can come out of it. So a real man will reach deep into the gifts, knowing that the gift of God make it room for you and make you to stand before kings. A real man will know that this is a problem, but it can be, there can be solution. This looks difficult, but blessings can come out of it. This looks confusing, but peace can come out of it. A real man will not walk out of the family and walk away. A real man will not give up. A real man will not start yelling and cause more confusion. That's not how you know a real man. Like Moses, when there is trouble and it looks so hard, I've never seen this in my life, he will go back to God. Say, God, you called me, you said you will be with me. We are in trouble now. I don't know what to do. They are crying for food. They are crying for water. In fact, the water we see now is a bitter water. What are we going to do? And the Lord will start giving him solution. That's how a real man will operate. It is trouble, yes. It is possible for Moses in turn. When they yell, it will cost them. Ungrateful people, I brought you out of, Israel, or out of Egypt and see what you are. You, you are not even grateful. You just say, God, we need your help here. And the Lord will give him solution. A real man acknowledging a problem will go back to God. He will not begin to take advantage of the problem to ridicule everybody around. A real man will go back to his maker. Say, Lord, you made me for a purpose. I need your help at this hour. My children need your help. My son needs your help. My daughter needs direction. My wife seems to be down. Lord, 
I entreat you. The Bible said Isaac entreated God for the sake of his wife. For 20 years. Never giving up. That's what real men will do. Real men will reach out to the gift of God. That's when you know you, I can fix it. We can do something about it. We can, you see, because you have opened up to God for solution, great ideas will start flowing. It will work well. So when your wife, your children, your community start celebrating you, you will pinch yourself, say, they don't know, say, I was scared too. Mm. They don't know, say, I was more troubled than they are. But thank God for Jesus. So when you engage in exorbitant praise, people don't know where you are coming from. You have come from a deep, low level that God showed you mercy. So, real men, we confront any situation, however difficult it may be, and draw out strength and begin to discover their gifts. Jesus said, if you know the gifts of God, I know you have been ridiculed. That's why you avoid people and come at a very unusual time. But I'm here to help you out. Are there still real men in the house? Let the real men shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say all the gifts of God in me. I command you to come alive. All the gifts of God in me. In the name of Jesus. Come alive. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, I profit in the grace and in the gift of God in my life. You receive that, say, thank you, Jesus. How do you identify a real man? Verse number 12, shall we read? And thou, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle, Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. From their conversation, the conversation now opened up to connect with the Abrahamic blessing, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, Jacob dug this well. He drank from it. He fed his cattle and his whole family with this, from this well. So real men, we connect people to their generational blessing. What will real men do? Real men will connect people to their generational blessings. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Knowing that the Samaritans have been disconnected from Abrahamic blessings. So she was presented with an opportunity to reconnect. So real men will identify your untapped resources and hook you up with it. Somebody say, identify my untapped resources and hook me up with it. Shout hallelujah. Because a lot of people never manifest the divine blueprint for their life. There are a lot of untapped generational blessings. It doesn't matter your family background or the, your exposure to life, what you have been through. There are still a lot of great blessings in that family of yours. It may look horrible, but the Lord allowed it for a purpose that he might bring the best in you. That when the people look at you that you came out of that family, they say, no, it is impossible. So that when you start coming into the fullness of God's purpose, people will know this must be the Lord's doing. It doesn't matter the confusion around you, but the real men, what they do, that they know that there are still untapped resources. And they connect you to your generational blessings. I have met with people, they will tell every bad story about their family, which is a real story. People are bad, people are evil, people are everything you can talk about. And as they are talking, the Holy Spirit will switch it. I begin to see untapped blessings in that family. I would say, do you know why your grandfather was like that, that you are complaining? Because as the man wanted to arise onto his destiny, something diverted him, and the whole family got into trouble. Do you know why your mother was like that? As she was planning to marry, a wrong man came into her life and messed her up. 
and they are planning the same for you, you better arise and shake it off. There is a blessing that something somehow had vowed that members of that family will not experience. From your time, you can have a turnaround that every good thing destined for my family that has never been experienced, I begin to taste it. What the point of hardship and affliction in my family, I disconnect from it. The untapped blessings in my family, I tap into it. As I see you, I see a lot of glorious things assigned to you and your family that has not, never manifested. We tap into the generational blessing. I command every blessing due to you that have been transferred, ignored, abandoned, afflicted. I decree those blessings to turn around and locate you, turn around and rest upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, every blessing due to me shall never be taken away. In the name of Jesus, I manifest every blessing due to me. In Jesus' name. You receive that, say yes. You receive that, say amen threefold. Real men will connect you to your generational blessings. That's how you know a real man. When he sees you, if you give the story of your life, that person will not use you, he will not turn it against you to mock you. We show sympathy, but we not engage, will not engage in a pity party. I don't like doing that. Even people want to force you to do that. No matter how horrible story, the story is, you want me to be crying with you? <laughs> no. All of us can't be confused at the same time. Somebody has to think right. So when you are doing, uh -huh, uh -huh, ooh, oh, I told this story. What's the way forward? What do you want to bring out of this? So I begin to see things differently from what you have said. So and I say, you know, it was like this. But this is what God intends. Even some people, they have so been used to generational curse that they will be arguing with you. No, 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 it's not like that. You don't know my family. I don't know your family, but I know one thing, that if anyone is born of God, he overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Somebody say, generational curses. Generational. Get out of my life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, cast it out. Out. Generational curses. The blood of Jesus rebuke you. Get out. Out of this place. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I embrace generational blessings. I manifest generational blessings. In Jesus name. And everyone says. How do you identify the real man? Number four. Verses 14 and 15. Shall we read out loud? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not Neither come here to draw. A real man will quench your thirst. What will a real man do? Quench your thirst. Listen. If you are listening, say yes. We all have unfulfilled desires. Which I believe the hand of God is stepping in to fulfill right now. Somebody say, I receive divine intervention in all my unfulfilled desires. Thank you, my resurrected Jesus, for meeting me at the points of my needs. In Jesus' name, you receive that, say yes. The real man will quench your thirst. Real man will connect you with your dreams. If it will mean to shake you up, to awaken you out of your slumber and make you begin to see the possibilities of breakthroughs, 
That's what the real men will do for you. Because many people, for them to be who they supposed to be in order to make it up, in order to make up, in, they need to be seriously shaken up, awakened out of their slumber, and to begin to see the possibility of good things. Life experiences have made people not to see possibility of good things. But from today, the eyes of your understanding is being enlightened in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, shake me up. Awake me out of slumber. Holy Spirit, shake me up. Awake me out of slumber. And make me to see possibilities of blessings. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, I truly know that with God, nothing shall be impossible. You believe that? You better shout it. I truly know and I truly believe that with God, nothing, absolutely nothing shall be impossible. Therefore, Holy Spirit, make me see possibilities to good things in life. Oh, you better lift up your voice and decree. Precious Holy Spirit, make me see possibilities to good things in life. Yes. Possibilities to good things in life. In Jesus' name. Lift up your two hands and cry to God. Jehovah my Father. The God of all possibilities. In your mercy. Arise to my help. Arise to my help. Jehovah my Father. The God of all possibilities. In your mercy, arise to my help. In the name of Jesus, can somebody cry unto the Lord to arise to your help? The God of all possibilities, arise to my help. The God of all possibilities, arise. 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 In Jesus' name. Remain. If you encounter the real men, their, most their utmost desire is that I'm associating with you for a purpose that you will fulfill your dreams. Otherwise, if it's not a real man, we'll be complaining with everything because he doesn't know what to do. Martin Luther King did not become famous by saying, I have a complaint. But what did he say? I have a dream. So if you have complaints all the time, it shows that person is not going far. But if you got a dream and walking towards fulfillment of that dream, you will receive help to fulfill it. Every glorious thing the Lord has set for you, receive grace. Amen. Receive strength to fulfill it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say, every good thing every good that God has set for me. Receive grace to come to pass. Say, it shall come to pass. It shall be established. It shall be fulfilled. In Jesus' name. You receive that, say yes. How do you identify the real man? I'll just point out seven for the sake of time. Let's check the fifth one. Verses 16, 17, and 18. Jesus said unto her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is now that is not your husband. In that said, Thou truly shout hallelujah. When Jesus looked at her, she understood her woundedness. People don't come here to fetch water from the well at this time of the day. I know what you are hiding. I know what you are hiding from. I know who you are hiding from. I know the reproach that has taken you out into your closet. Real men. We walk towards healing 
the wounds of your past. What we remain do? We walk towards healing the wounds of your past. Let's say it together. Remain, we walk towards healing the wounds of your past. Are there still remain in the house? Shout hallelujah. That's what three men will do. Jesus could look at that woman and saw a woundedness. And people have caused so much damages to her life. And so she's been avoiding everybody. Disappointments, yes. Abuse, yes. Losses, many. But an encounter with Jesus brought all those to an end. Today, Jehovah is establishing himself as your true father. Bringing you out of disappointments. Victory over your failures. Triumphing over your defeats. Releasing joy over areas of abuses. And in all areas of your loss, I see divine restoration. You received that shout, yes. yes. Disappointments, abuses, and losses have caused deep wounds in the life of so many people. Unfortunately, it's worsened by the people you connect with. Just like the psalmist said, the, the book of Zechariah said, I was wounded in the house of my friends. The real man will feel your wounds and will be walking towards the healing of those wounds. Why are so many people so edgy and touch and, and so any little thing is like they spark up. It's not about them. They are expressing their wounds. Why are people treating you in so rough and so bad? Is because they are expressing their wounds. When people talk down about others, that person talking is wounded. One thing I normally do when I hear this one, he, come and say, he, he's talking about me, saying this. I think that person is more wounded than you and needs serious help. I say, really? I say, it's truly, the person is just expressing his or her woundedness. And it's just a way of trying to divert their focus out of their own troubles. That's why they talk about others. But real men will identify the wounds of people and walk towards how can this be healed? You are better than this. Something good can come out of this. This behavior you exhibit that make people avoid you and run away from you it's not about you. There is a deep wound that got to be healed. Real men we walk towards, what are these wounds? Who wounded you? Who sabotaged you to this point? What can be done? That's what real men will do. Real men we walk towards healing of your wounds. If you have any man that deepens your wounds, before you cry for your own help, ask God to help that person because that person is confused. Because you can't see somebody who's re badly injured and you are stabbing the more and stabbing the more. You know the person too is not normal. So when you see somebody who just, God forbid, just had an accident, blood, wounds all over, and then you are taking, you are Trying to stab the person the more. The, the people we first arrest that person. Say this one is confused. So those who create more wounds and trouble for others is because they are simply confused. May God heal their confusion. Real men, we walk towards healing of the wounds. What can be done? Let's bandage it together. Let's work on this together until healing be restored. Can you present your woundedness 
areas of your woundedness before God and believe God for the healing. Lift up those two and say, my eternal father, I present all my wounds. In every area I've been wounded, I present this before the throne of grace. Heal my wounds, O oh God, and restore my soul. Can somebody talk to the Lord? Ask God to heal your wounds and restore your soul. My eternal father, I ask, I pray. Mm, hallelujah. Something great is happening here today. Heal my wounds, O oh God, and restore now my soul. In Jesus' name. And everyone says, number six, how would you identify a real man? Verse 20. Let's read. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Where men ought to worship. Real men will connect you to worship the true God. What will real men do? Real men will connect you to worship the true God. Let's say it together out loud. Listen, this is very vital in life. Very, very vital. If a man does not love God, he can never love you. Never. Forget it. Another one. Listen. If a man is unwilling to serve God, he can never be there for you. Believe it. If a man is not willing to serve God, and you say that is the one you hook your life to, only God will help you. He will never be there for you. All those excuses of not serving God is a way to tell you it's not real. That's how you identify a, a real man. A man doesn't love God. And you feel he will love you. All those, I love you, I love you. It's fake. You will soon see. If a man is unwilling to serve God and give all his heart to in serving God, he can never appreciate you. Never. I, I, what are you going to do in the house of God? I'm still washing. If the zeal of the house of God will not consume such a man, you know it's already cage. No living being will not look up unto his maker that is in his right sense. The Lord created me for a purpose. I go back to my maker. Any defects in me, Lord, fix it. Every weakness in me, Lord, I receive strength from you because he knows that's where he gets his strength from God. If a man will set the affairs of this world above the things of God, it won't take you far in life. It will abandon you and trade you with the treasures of this world. It will trade you out. Show me a man that has the zeal for God. You will see a man that will love you forever. This generation, our outlook to life is so strange, and that's why we are wounded every day. A real man will connect you to the true and living God. If a man is not pointing your life to God, he's there to wreck you. If a man will not see any situation as opening it up to God to come in and take preeminence, you need to cry out for help. I, this is the generation I see that men are timid and afraid to even call upon God in the presence of people. They say, I pray on my own. I have my way of praying. I do it my way. That's your way. Listen, there is a way that seemeth good unto man. The end thereof is death, is destruction. It can't be your way. Because Jesus is the way. So if you must make it, you go Jesus' way. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So real men 
we connect you to the true God. So that it can be a testimony. From the moment I knew you or got connected with you, I seem to love God much better. I don't know. I just love God more. Why? Real men we influence. Because if you don't influence people around you unto God, they will be the doorway for satanic invasion. If you don't influence those around you in God's way, they will be the doorway for satanic invasion. If you keep people around you that does not love God, that does not want to serve God, before you know, they will quench your glory. That's the danger. My friend there, my friend there, check those friends. They don't serve God, they don't love God. Already you are caged. You are surrounded with people that will be an open door for satanic invasion. Show me the kind of friend you keep. We will know who you are. Because if you are vibrant and on fire for God, look when people cannot come too close because you will infect them. If I come too close, I will begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. One of our sisters in the choir was sharing a testimony in our office. I love that. Myself and my wife were listening. She was just talking about God in the office. And this lady said, excuse me, this is an office place. Nothing like that at all. She said, okay. And she kept quiet. From the um, upper floor they were, suddenly, the ways of God is so great. Suddenly, the weather changed. It was dark, storm, stormy, and then thunder just struck through their window. And this same lady said, Jesus! And everybody said, you? You know this is office place. You don't be religious. Say, ah, not for this kind of thunder. <laughs> That's the lady there. Shout hallelujah. She just condemned people. And everybody start coming to her and say, this is your God we fear. Within a few minutes, the Lord showed up. Shout hallelujah. Real men will connect you to God. If you hang out with people that does not love God, your life is in jeopardy. On a serious note, if you hang out with people that does not want to hear about God, does not love him, and not willing to serve him, and chill out in ungodly places, you are already caged. You need help. And that is why you don't want to offend, offend them by really telling them you are going to church. You just say, I, I'm, I'm doing something for the family, and you sneak to church. The Lord will forgive us. I will show you who I am. I am. I'm a lover of Jesus. You don't love it, shame on you. Because that's my eternal joy. I will guard it with everything I have. Nothing will take the joy of salvation out of my life. Because I knew what caused God to redeem my soul. I can't trade it for anybody or for anything. It's an eternal covenant. Real men. We look out for the weak and helpless and connect them to Jesus. If you have not standing in that point, may the Lord bring you up again. Shout hallelujah. What will the real man do? Let me just take one more because of time. Verses 25 and 26. Shall we read? The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he's come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. Remain, we reveal the Messiah to people. The danger of our time is people are in darkness and they couldn't see the light. 
The prince of this world has blinded their eyes of understanding that they could not see. But real men will know that they have a mandate. Someone say, I've got a mandate. My own mandate is that Christ Jesus be magnified in every area of my life. My own mandate is according to what Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 verse 24. And they glorify God in me. What is your own mandate? The real man will reveal Jesus to others. No man will have a revelation of Jesus and remain the same. Never. Saul of Tarsus, very turbulent, adding man that obtained a certification, a license to kill. And he was on the mission to kill. But he encountered Jesus. He still went to where he was going, but he transformed man. No man has an encounter with Jesus and will remain the same. No woman has an encounter with Jesus and will remain the same. The trouble is people's eyes have been blinded not to see the truth of the gospel. The assignment of a real man is to reveal Jesus. Open their eyes to see Jesus. So that the contact people have with you is like, do you know lately I've been thinking about Jesus? Do you know lately the love of God just overflow my heart? That's your assignment in your home. That's your assignment on your job. That's your assignment anywhere you go to reveal Jesus unto others. This dark age needs revelation of Jesus. People that are deeply in sin, they need revelation of Jesus. The occultism and the, the, and the disastrous culture that we have built up needs revelation of Jesus. When Jesus is revealed, it's not a bad point of argument or conversion. Or conversion. Sometimes ago, I witnessed a, a, a television interview among several religious groups. Thank God there were two Christian groups, there two, people, two Christian people representing the Christian religion. It's not a religion anyway. It's representing the Christian faith. And other people were, everybody was just focusing on mocking and criticizing Jesus. So the other one with his theology was proving them wrong. That other one kept quiet. He kept quiet. And the mother said, are you not going to speak? And he looked at them and said, I bind that negative spirit, the antichrist spirit over this atmosphere. Their eyes widened. Who are you? The demons manifested. I rebuke that foul spirit. In the name of Jesus. The moderator said, you have not said anything. Say, even, even whether anybody under the networking of this meeting that have been stirred up to release confusion in the heart of men regarding Jesus, I bring them under the arrest of the interview over. That other one was arguing. He saw, when, they, when he walked out, he said, why were you doing that? He said, if you argue from here till eternity, because they are on the way to hell, they can't see. And I believe that down the line, somebody will arise. I know I have had that testimony very well. The last place I walked, many years back, there was this imam to walk in there extremely violent. Once I look at him, I say, it is written. Boom. He will say, keep quiet. I say, did I talk to you? Once I pass him, it is written. The light shines in darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. It is written, let God arise. Let his enemy be scattered. He too, he will be chanting their own. I say, the prince of the air, you are muzzled. The guy hated me with everything. He sabotaged me on the job, did many things. I did what I have to do. 20 years after I left, he called. 
He said, shout hallelujah. I say, Abdul Gaba. He said, shout hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. Tell me, I'm, just tell me your story. He said, the last day you came out of that walk, you said the next time you see me or hear from me will be to talk about Jesus. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. The Lord, in your journey here in life, the Lord will make you pass through people or make people pass through you. If you don't leave a mark of Jesus on them, may their blood never be upon your head. Don't let it be that they never had a chance to hear about Jesus. We should be carrier of his glory, the carrier of his presence everywhere. So that when you go anywhere, people can perceive and smell the aroma of God in you. I can smell God in you. My own mandate in this land of the living that God, Christ Jesus may be magnified in all that I do. And they glorify God in me. The real man will reveal Jesus to others. Your life will bring revelation of Jesus. People had a bad, a bad experience. They had an understanding that is not pleasant towards Jesus. People don't even know, have a clue. They just feel it's just like any other religion and Jesus is good. They don't know that their life is in danger, that without Jesus, they perish. They don't know that Jesus is the only way to make heaven, not like, like any other way. They don't know that Jesus came to rescue them and reveal and restore them to life. They really don't know. You feel they know? They don't. They celebrate Christmas as one of the festivals. But they don't know that Jesus was born for this purpose. To redeem man out of darkness and bring us to, his, to God's marvelous light. We feel they know the enemy has twisted their mind. They really don't know. A real man will reveal Jesus anywhere you go. So that you leave a, a footprint that Jesus passed by here. What will be said of you, what you, whom you have contacted, and they are wasting away, could the Lord end in you and be satisfied with your purpose of being there? Are there still three men in the house? What the Holy Spirit is doing in this meeting, to remember this Father's Day, is that I have received grace to be a real man. The woman got to the well at an unusual time because she had isolated herself for a long time. She, and this day was an unusual day for her. She didn't expect to meet anybody. Getting to the well, Jesus sat on the same well. And when she encountered Jesus, she abandoned her water pot and ran back to the village and said unto the man, come and see a man. What did she say to the man? Come. What did she say to the man? Come. May it be said concerning you also that people will use you as a referential testimony. You call yourself a man? Come and see a man. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? Minera, nera, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou art thou. Draw me nera, oh nera, blessed Lord. The cross in the cross 
be my glory and till my life your soul shall find beyond the river at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith that I received my Must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life. If that is your prayer, let's pour out our heart unto the Lord. Jesus must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life. Hallelujah. Jesus must be honored. Must be honored. Must be honored. Hallelujah. Jesus must be honored. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God a wave of praise.